What's up guys? Today we are talking about the most common mistakes that beginner steelhead anglers make out on the river and how you can avoid them. I made all of these mistakes myself when I started out so hopefully this video helps you avoid some of them and get out there and catch fish more consistently. I'm going to be talking mostly about float fishing but some of these tactics can apply to all types of fishing. The number one mistake that I see most often on the river is people not fishing deep enough. When I first started out, the absolute best advice anyone gave me was if you think you're fishing deep enough, try fishing a little bit deeper. These fish are gonna be sitting close to the bottom and you need to get your presentation down to their level if you wanna catch fish consistently. So when you come to a new spot, start fishing it super deep until you see your float leaning forward so you'll know your presentation is dragging on the bottom behind it. And then you can start adjusting your bobber uh, until you're just a couple inches off the bottom and your float is sitting straight up and down in the run. Another mistake I see all the time is having too much slack in your line and that's gonna prevent you from setting the hook effectively and it's gonna make your drift look a little bit unnatural too. So to avoid this, you wanna keep line off the water if you can and a long rod is gonna help. Um, something nine foot or longer really helps you manage your line well. Um, but the other thing you wanna do is make sure you're mending your line throughout the drift. So whenever you notice a ton of line on the water getting out in front of your bobber, you're gonna to wanna to make sure to pick your rod tip straight up, lift that line off the water, maybe even throw some of that line back upriver a little bit, um, and then you can gather up that slack so that you'll have that tight connection to your bobber again. Another mistake I see beginners make a lot is not really having a good plan for how they're gonna catch and release fish. It doesn't matter if you're keeping them, but if you're planning to release a fish, you don't wanna drag it up on the shore and have it flopping around on the rocks while you're fumbling for your players or for your phone to take a picture or trying to unhook that fish. If you're gonna be primarily catch and release fishing, you should have a good net with you. Um, I, I'll leave a link to this one in the description below along with some other cool products too. But this net has served me really well for the last four years. It's got a wide hoop, a deep mesh bag, it floats on the water. Um, it's big enough to handle these fish, but then also the deep bag allows you to keep that fish in the water after you've landed it. You can unhook it right there in your net. Um, you can get your phone ready, set it on the bank for a picture, and then you only have to lift that fish up and out of the net for a second and then get it swimming right back. This might be personal opinion, but based on the beginners that I've been out with and the way I used to fish, I feel like beginners tend to wait too long to set the hook. Steelhead can be pretty finicky. Those bites can be very soft and they can be very quick. Sometimes your float won't even go all the way under the surface of the water. You might just see it bobbling a couple times. I advise people to set the hook in those situations. Um, you're, you might miss a fish here and there because you set it too early, but I think beginners tend to miss fish because they don't set it at all or they set it way too late. Um, so I really encourage you, if you see something unnatural in the movement of your bobber, set the hook and you might be surprised at how often it's a fish. The fifth mistake I'm gonna talk about today is experimenting too often with the baits and lures you're using. Um, until you're really comfortable out there, you don't need to have five different sizes of beads and five different colors and a hundred different colors of marabou jigs. I really recommend just sticking to the basics, the one that are tried and true and that everybody's gonna have in their box, um, like a white marabou jig, a black marabou jig with an orange head or a pink head. Uh, of course, you guys know the combo special, a two inch crappie tube with a 132nd ounce jig head. Um, and then maybe some spawn, um, some fresh spawn sacks if you're able to fish those as well. Um, but sticking to those basics rather than trying to switch things up and try new plastics and new bead colors and new jig colors constantly, um, I think really helps beginners focus in on the other variables like how deep they're fishing um, and be more successful there. The next mistake I'll talk about is not weighting your presentation effectively. Um, so in float fishing, a lot of your floats are going to have a gram rating on it. It might be an 8 gram float or an 11 gram float. And you want to make sure all the other weight underneath your float adds up to that number. So you never want to see your float laying flat on the surface like this. That means you don't have enough weight on your setup. So a really easy way to do this um, is to actually use egg sinkers underneath your float and attach those to your main line um, before you connect your leader to that main line. So if you have an eight gram float, you might wanna use a quarter ounce egg sinker underneath that. It might seem like a small detail, but it is gonna help you catch more fish. So make sure you have that weight balanced with whatever your float rating is. 
This next one might sound super basic, but a lot of times when I go out with beginners, they end up being really cold and thinking more about how cold they are um, than how to land that next fish. So you want to avoid this. It does get super cold when you're steelhead fishing, especially in winter. You want to have um, fleece base layers under your waders. I really like neoprene waders for the winter. Uh, these are super warm, super cost effective, um, and they help trap in a lot of that warmth when you're fishing. Um, I also always recommend, you know, it's going to be your feet, it's going to be your hands, and it's going to be your face that get cold fastest. So you're going to want to make sure you have have, you know a couple pairs of gloves you want to be wearing good wool socks or maybe some insulated boot liners under your waders to keep you warm so you can keep focused on the fishing another mistake that I see beginners make is not checking the gauges for the rivers they fish so the flow gauges will tell you how high the river is how fast the river is moving and as you get more familiar with your river it'll tell you what spots you want to fish at what different levels so I really recommend that you pay attention to the USGS gauges. You can do it on the USGS website or you can use an app. I use an app called River App that's super effective. Paying attention to those gauges is gonna help you be able to see, okay, the river is flowing at this today. I know I'm gonna go to this spot or I might go to this creek actually instead of the main river. Um, it's gonna help you start building up a better knowledge bank of when you should go where. The ninth mistake I'm gonna talk about today is not talking to other people while you're out on the river. So it can be scary to talk to other people, especially when you don't feel comfortable and you don't feel like you can catch as many fish as they can. Um, but most people are really willing to share their experiences, give you advice. You just have to be willing to ask them. Um, so if you have questions, if you're not sure how to read a certain hole, um, if you're not sure what's working or what they're catching fish with, go ahead and ask people questions and most people will be very generous with their knowledge about how they started catching fish. The last mistake I'll talk about is getting too caught up in the competition. I absolutely recommend that beginners should join online communities. You know, you should join Facebook fishing groups. You should download the Fishbrain app to see what kind of fish are being caught near you and what's working well. But you don't want to get too caught up in the competition. You will see people posting lots of big fish. You will see people talking about 10 fish days, 15 fish days, 20 fish days. And if you're not putting up those same kind of numbers, that can be pretty daunting. But you shouldn't let it get to you. Don't let someone else's 10 fish day ruin your two fish day or your one fish day or just the time you spent out on the river. That's all we've got for today's video, guys. I hope it's helpful. I know how hard steelhead fishing can be when you first start out. I made all of these mistakes myself. So hopefully if you can avoid some of them, you'll be able to start catching fish more consistently. I'd love to hear what questions you have or feedback you have in the comments below. Um, hope to see you guys out on the river. Um, good luck next time out. Thanks everyone for watching um, and have a great day.